all your country came here to knock down. You now try desperately to keep from falling. Sergeant Olin Isaac and Staff Sergeant Shane Matthews have been lying in ambush for many hours, waiting for the appearance of an enemy sniper. The command sent them here when they received information about an attack on engineers laying a pipeline in Iraq. All the engineers and the security at the construction site were killed. They sent special forces soldiers to help, but they were also destroyed. Shane Matthews doesn't believe that the shooter is still here. He thinks the sniper has left his position a long time ago. However, Isaac believes that a true professional did this, which means he could still be somewhere around. Matthews doesn't listen to him. He goes to check if there's anyone behind the wall where they thought the shooter was hiding. When Matthews leaves, Isaac notices that his optics are malfunctioning. He took them from his deceased comrade as a reminder of his death. He never told anyone about it, but on a joint mission, he accidentally shot his partner while fighting off the enemy. After that, he never took up a sniper rifle again. Finding himself among the corpses, Matthews realizes that guy who kills them is a real professional. He is already considering returning, but then he is shot and wounded. Isaac rushes to help, and the sniper also opens fire on him. Bullets hit the radio, a water flask, and then Isaac's knee. Isaac has to hide behind a low wall, which was once part of a local school. Matthews lies in the dust, in pain, and already says goodbye to his partner. However, Isaac is not willing to die. He tightens a tourniquet on his leg and tries to contact the command and call for backup. That's when he realizes that the radio is broken. Isaac is in panic. He makes a small hole in the wall to figure out where the sniper is firing from and continues talking to Matthew, who no longer shows signs of life. Then Isaac gathers his courage and extracts the bullet from his knee. The sniper used NATO bullets, which means he was trained in the Alliance's forces and then defected to the enemy. After bandaging his leg, Isaac briefly loses consciousness. When he comes to, he hears the voice of a radio operator in his earpiece, asking him to give his coordinates so that the command can send backup. The operator also asks Isaac for his call sign and other information. Finally, Isaac realizes that he is speaking with the enemy sniper who I'm talking about hiding behind word like you are hiding behind that wall. The shooter proposes they have a conversation, saying that he will ask questions, and if Isaac refuses to answer, the sniper will shoot Matthews in the head, destroying his face. After such an act, the staff sergeant's family would have to bury him in a closed casket. Isaac agrees to have the conversation while simultaneously trying to figure out where the sniper is in the distance from which he fired. After calculating, he determines that the sniper's position is about one and a half kilometers away. Isaac guesses the closest point where the sniper could be and continues talking to him. He learns that the shooter used to be an ordinary person until the United States came to his country. That's when he went to fight against them and did it well. While continuing to talk to the sniper, Isaac crawls to the edge of the wall and sees a dead soldier with a radio nearby. There should also be water and food left, but he doesn't dare to go there. In the meantime, the sniper informs him that he intentionally aimed at the radio, water, and Isaac's leg. He wanted Isaac to stay alive and die slowly from blood loss. Isaac and the sniper continue to communicate through the radio. During the conversation, Isaac learns what weapon the shooter is using and how many rounds he has left, but all this information is approximate. He doesn't know anything for certain. Finally, the sniper gives himself away during the radio conversation. In the background, Isaac hears the beating of a metal sheet and the cawing of crows. He compares the sounds to what he sees through his scope and realizes that the sniper has taken up position on the top of construction debris. From there, the entire valley is visible. Now, Isaac is sure that the shooter hiding in the debris is a true professional. He has been there for a very long time, maintaining vigilance and having received better training than both Isaac and Matthews. Despite this, Isaac doesn't lose hope of exposing the enemy, identifying his position, and killing him. To do this, he takes off his outer clothing and helmet, puts them on his weapon, and raises everything above the wall. He hopes that the sniper will take the bait and reveal himself. However, the shooter only laughs at Isaac's pathetic attempts to locate him. The wind picks up, and due to the dust cloud, nothing can be seen. Isaac decides to use this as cover to approach the dead soldier and take his radio and backpack. He uses his weapon as a crutch, steps out from behind the wall, and rushes to the corpse. The sniper has him in the crosshairs but doesn't pull the trigger. He doesn't need Isaac to die right now. However, he punishes the sergeant for his recklessness by firing a few bullets in his direction, dragging the soldier's radio and backpack. Isaac drinks water, eats melted candies in the heat and tries to establish communication, but the soldier's radio is also broken. While Isaac was next to the corpse, he noticed that his knee had been shot as well. He understood that the soldier had been in his place, dying slowly in the desert while having a conversation with the sniper. 
The shooter continues to annoy Isaac with his chatter, but Isaac can barely hear him. Someone else interrupts their conversation by simply turning the radio on and off. At first, Isaac doesn't understand what happened, since he believes his partner to be dead. But then he realizes that it's Matthews, sending him signals. The staff sergeant regains consciousness and hears Isaac's conversation with the sniper. Isaac sees that his partner is alive and gives him directions to the sniper. Matthews uses a small mirror to locate his rifle without raising his head. Then, he slowly starts crawling toward it. He wants to reach the rifle, take a position, and eliminate the sniper while Isaac distracts the enemy. Matthews grabs the rifle by the strap as the wind and dust clouds cover his movement. He has already pulled the weapon towards himself and is ready to open fire. Isaac asks the staff sergeant to act more slowly but forgets to turn off the communication device. The sniper realizes that something is wrong. To distract the sniper, Isaac fires from his rifle and tries to lie to the enemy, but the shooter has already figured out what's going on. He shoots at Matthews, who returns fire blindly and misses. The sniper continues to shoot at Matthews as he crawls towards Isaac behind the wall. His partner has already moved out to meet him, but the shooter kills Matthews just a few steps away from Isaac's wall. Once again, he leaves Isaac alive. I won't go fucking home, motherfucker. He tells the sniper the whole truth about his partner, whom he accidentally shot. When the shooter cuts off the communication, Isaac crawls to the radio. He takes a spare part from the dead soldier's radio, installs it on his own, and tries to contact the base. However, the sniper is already talking on the radio. He tells the command that everything is calm and they can send helicopters for Isaac and Matthews. Isaac realizes that the sniper has pulled off this trick before. He trapped the previous group, killed them, and called for Isaac and Matthews. Now, he is calling for backup again. An unsuspecting group of soldiers will fall into the trap. Isaac understands that there is nothing he can do. He is tired and has lost a lot of blood. He loses consciousness and wakes up when a crow starts pecking at his wound. Isaac hears the noise of helicopters coming to evacuate him and Matthew. He knows he needs to do something. Isaac rigs a hook to pull his partner's rifle into cover. He attaches the weapon and pulls it towards himself so he can take an aimed shot while preserving the remaining part of the wall he has been hiding behind all this time. The sniper sees this and opens fire on Isaac. Bullets land nearby without hitting the sergeant. He notices where the fire is coming from and shoots at that part of the trash mountain. The enemy stops responding, no longer firing, and Isaac believes he has taken him down. The helicopters are already close. Isaac stands up, ready for his head to be blown off at any moment, thus warning his comrades that there is an enemy nearby and that landing here is not safe. However, the sniper does not shoot, which means Isaac really killed him. The soldiers retrieve Matthew's body place Isaac on a stretcher, and he tries to tell them that the shooter is on the trash mountain. The helicopters take off, and everything seems to be in order, but then one of the soldiers is killed. More shots ring out, and Isaac informs the soldiers where the fire is coming from, but it's already too late. The helicopter is shot down, crashing to the ground, followed by the second one. The base calls for the helicopter pilots, but the sniper answers them. He is ready to request new reinforcements on behalf of the American soldiers to lure them into a trap and kill them again. That's all for today. Subscribe to Tom Talks, like, and comment if you want more videos like this. Stay in touch.